Well, the Audible is back on the air. Good afternoon. I'm Kim Bocamper. You'll never guess. Well, I guess you'll guess if you're looking at the okay. picture. You'll never <laughs> guess who wandered by the Audible this afternoon to jump there in. Hall go. of Famer Dan Marino. Danny, thanks for stopping oh, in today, Bo, man. good to see you, man. Thank you. What yeah, do you think about our little set it's here? It's okay. Huh? It's What's wrong nice. with this? It is nice. action back here. Yeah. Hang out a little no, bit? it is nice. It's nice. Hey, uh, how's, uh, how's training camp? You know, you've been out there every day and... You're yeah. looking at guys, yeah. and, and how it's do you feel good. like things are going? You know what? It's been really good, and yeah. uh, I, I think just the excitement, you know, with the new coaching staff and Adam Gates and uh, the players are yeah. really, you know, I, you know the energy level. Yeah. You know, you know, in summer camp sometimes, yeah. you know, you don't have the energy, but it's watching the guys practice, the energy, you know, the speed, the tempo, you see it's all there, and that they, they're caring about yeah. being, you know, being a good football team. You know, you've been around here a lot during the offseason. They, they spent a lot of time, these guys, the offseason, rededicated their, their strength program to get guys a little stronger, healthier, all those situations going in. And, and it looks like it's paying dividends early in this camp. Well, you know, I mean, the, the one thing that uh, Mr. Ross and, and just the, the initiative of, you know, the whole organization is to, to get better not only, you know, for strength-wise, but but health and, you know, nutrition and all, all those things. And there's every, every aspect of uh, – uh, anything you can think of yeah. is, has to do with football. You know, it's there for the young guys to take care of and uh, take care of themselves. You're, you're, you've been on the field every day during during training camp. What's a typical day for you when when they've got a regular scheduled day of practice, yeah. meetings and everything? What what, what is your? So I, I mean, I just get here before the practice yeah. and go through practice and you know enjoy watching that. And yeah. you know, the scouts have been in town this past yeah. week and spending some time with them and then. Uh, you know, looking at the practice tape, and uh, there's some of the meetings I'll jump in and out of, and and, and be involved in that a yeah. little bit. It's been a lot of fun for me, Everybody obviously. Paid, uh, paid there's Peyton the came day. out. That, uh, yeah, yeah. That must have been a fun conversation. That's big money right there. I tell you what, you, you know, it's it's hard not to look at him and just Nationwide, think. Nationwide, Papa John, it, what it, else he got, he got, got going on? Man. Did he drop you? <laughs> did he drop a pizza by you or something? Or no, I know Papa uh, give John. Give you a free, give, right. give you a, hook you up with some direct TV or something. <laughs> no, we, we like we like Anthony's coal fire there pizza. We ain't worried about Papa John's. <laughs> I got you. Hey, but it's it's nice to have Peyton out here, yeah. I, and I, I think for a lot of the guys out there, you know, cer certainly for the young quarterbacks, Ryan Tannehill, and I don't care if you're a quarterback or not. You're out here during training camp. You see Peyton Manning roll out on the field, and uh, it's got to be a special day for everybody. You know, I mean, Peyton came and talked to the team a little bit, and it was great. You know, yeah. he was kind of funny, told a couple jokes, and and uh, talked about you know what it takes to be a true pro, and and uh, that's what he is. You know, yeah. he's a true pro, and having guys like that around, and the fact that you know he worked with Adam Gase, and and uh, and they did so much together, and. Uh, as far as uh, you know, what he did breaking the records that one year, yeah. Adam Gase was a part of that. Um, but it's good having veteran guys around like that, guys that are going to be in the Hall of Fame, just to bounce things off them. And he ran this offense. I mean, this is the same offense he was running, yeah. and uh, uh, obviously, it's uh, been pretty productive over the years. You've known Peyton for a long time, and he's just a good guy. Yes, you, no you know, doubt. you see the fans out there. You see Peyton in commercials, and you see this and that, and and he's got this personality. But but, but that's who he is, right? I mean, he's 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 just a good guy. He is. He's a good guy, and uh, there's no doubt the, as far as just being a player, but as a person yeah. and the things he does, uh, you know, off the field and uh, caring about the game and caring about – he has that camp in New Orleans that he does when he bring young uh, – kids that want to be quarterbacks or wide receivers into his camp and and uh, he cares that way takes a lot of pride in that he's been doing that for a lot of years with his brother and, and, and his dad obviously uh, but no he's a good guy he's fun to be around I've known him a long time we played uh, you know his first game in the NFL was against us so yeah. you know we, we played against each other for a couple years uh, I got nothing nothing bad to say yeah. about him other than the fact that he's just uh, just a great great player he's going to yeah. be a Hall of Famer all the things he did so you know, it's, it's good to have them around. It really is. And the Audible uh, is an interactive show, so uh, we're here on Facebook. Go ahead and throw your questions to Danny, and we'll go ahead and get those answered. We want you to participate in the show. You'll drive it, and we'll go in the direction that you want to take us. Kind of building on. Don't make them too tough. No, no, not too tough at all. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about this when I saw Peyton out there and just talking about Peyton. You know, when I was in the league, I, I, one of my favorite, we've all got pictures. Everyone's got pictures of, of playing. One of my favorite pictures is me sacking uh, Archie Manning. Okay. Because at the time, Archie, you know, Ar Archie, you know, coming out of college, playing, in New and they never won games. They're at New Orleans. They'd win one or two games a year. Right. Yet, yet Archie, you know, his status, he was the guy. his status yeah. in the league and he, him as a quarterback was at the highest level. It was a, it was a, a dichotomy between the way the team was and the way he was, but I had more respect for him. And I was, I mean, that to me is still one of my favorite pictures. And, and you know, I remember uh, my rookie year 
camp, we went up to uh, Vero Beach yep. and we practiced against, and they had Kenny Stabler. That's right. And they had Archie Manning, and I can't remember who the other quarterback was. It was Bump Phillips was the uh, the yeah, head coach right. then. I think they had Earl Campbell, who was kind of yeah. at, at the end of his career, and I was just coming in, and it was it was amazing for me, you know, cause watching these guys growing yeah. up. Now I was on the field with them and practicing against them, so it was it was it was awesome. Did, did you get a chance to talk to uh, Archie on your first trip up I, to Vero? Uh, you know, I it's kind of quick, I probably it's did. Kind of yeah, I probably you know there. just kind of like yeah, hi, see yeah, you, yeah. you know that kind of thing. But uh, got to know Archie over the years. Yeah. Um, uh, great guy, just uh, enjoyed yeah, being amazing. around him. Yeah, that family, and they're all, you know, what's amazing about that family. They're all the highest caliber people. Yeah, no, you know? there's no doubt. And uh, and uh, for him to have two guys to play at the level that they played yeah. at, it's just yeah. a testament to him, you know. And uh, uh, you know, I tell Peyton all the time, the best quarterback in the family is Archie. Yeah, <laughs> you, know what, you know what? And I'm sure, I'm sure Peyton doesn't He'd argue say the that. same thing. He's yeah, got a lot of respect. I mean, obviously, the respect yeah, no, he has I for know, his dad is, I know, I know. is unquestioned. So he's not going to argue argue too much about that. So, sure. hey, speaking of that, when you were uh, when you were in college, high school, uh, and you looked at quarterbacks, who was the guy you looked up to? So. Uh, you know, I guess as a younger player, uh, loved watching Joe Namath play, yeah. you know, uh, his style. Yeah, you got a little of that gunslinger yeah, out of him, Yeah, right? for sure. You know, and, and actually, you know, when you look back at some of the film and you look at his film, our throwing styles were very yeah. similar. But um, just the fact that, you know, he was in movies, yeah. you know, he was yeah. the one of the first guys to wear white shoes. Yeah. He had long hair, the whole thing. I mean, I was like, you know, this is this is pretty cool. I mean, he, and, you know, Joe Namath made playing quarterback cool. Yeah. Um, and not nothing against Johnny Unitas, but he had yeah. the high black shoes and the crew <laughs> cut. I was like, ah, I'd like yeah. to Joe. You know, he's to get yeah. that style, you know. Yeah. And he's the first guy to bring swagger to the NFL. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, you've uh, since since then you've had a chance to, to to get to know Joe, play golf with Joe. Yeah. Do you ever, when you play golf with Joe, do you ever at some point go, man, you know, this is a guy I used to I used to look up to. Uh, now here I am I playing golf him, with yeah, him. Yeah, for sure. I, I got a quick story, which is funny. He, he had a book that he put out, you know, years ago, and I think it was called A Matter of Style. Mm -hmm. And it was about, you know, it was him telling a story about his life, but also about, you know, playing the quarterback yeah. position and all that. And I remember seeing it when I was a kid. And then as I got older, you know, I was like, you know, I want to get one of those books. Yeah. And uh, I had my wife research and try to find one because it was, you know, it was a long time ago. And uh, she ended up finding two. Right. So the cool thing about it was I sent him to Joe. I gave him one and he yeah. said he never had, you know, he didn't have one. Right. He didn't save it. So he got one and he signed one for me, which was, you know, for me, it was really yeah. cool. Yeah. Pretty, pretty good stuff. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. Hey, you're listening to the audible. Uh, you can go ahead and pass your questions along here through Facebook uh, or Facebook. I'm sorry. Um, Close I was gonna, enough. Close you, enough. Face back, Facebook, <laughs> muscle back, you know, my back, your back. Who cares? We're on the, we're on the air and, and people are watching. So that's what we're all about. Hey, I was going to talk a little about Ryan Tannehill and, and your relationship with him, how you're working with him. But there's a question here um, that was here, but now it kind of moved on. But anyway, um, when you look at Ryan, what do you see in Ryan's progression? As you watch Ryan, I didn't get the name hey, because know, it kind of yeah, moved just, on. Yeah, just, I mean, watching him since he's come in here and and, uh, and getting a little closer, being in some meetings and yeah. stuff. I mean, he's he's been seeing the last couple of years him playing the way his style plays. He's tough, you know, what yeah. you need to be a quarterback. He's a competitor. He wants to be really good. He's a smart guy. He um, He's tough. He has he can make all the throws. And, and I think it's really just – now it's just a matter of him getting, you know, comfortable with mm -hmm. the new offense and the, the, the new personnel and, you know, and turn it loose. They're giving him a lot of leeway. It's, it's going to look like it's going to be his. You know, and that's the thing. It's got to be his, his offense. He's got to be the leader and be in charge. And, you know, he's very capable of being, doing that. You played in an era where audibles were out there. You'd you'd get the line of scrimmage. You'd make your changes. You'd do all, all the things you want to do. Ryan comes in where it's boiled down a little more. Now he gets that opportunity. How much a difference, or how, how much will that add to his repertoire as a quarterback? Yeah, you know, I think any quarterback, it's not necessarily you know I have to go up and change the play at the line, right. which I did sometimes. I changed Coach Shula's plays a little no. bit. He didn't, you know, but <laughs> more times than not. Yeah, more, more times than <laughs> not. No, not all the time, but. Um, I think it's just uh, like owning the offense and, and and not necessarily going up and changing every play yeah. at the line of scrimmage, but it's getting out of a bad play. Yeah. You know, that's that's the thing. Uh, as a quarterback, you know, you want a, a style of offense that, that's going to give you a chance mm -hmm. if you get up there and, you, you know, you're calling your, you, you know, you're calling your signals, looking at the defense and, it, and something changes. You want to be able to get to something else to give your offense a chance to be successful on that particular play. And I think that's what – you know, that's what this offense is going to bring for, for Ryan and the total offense, you know, together. So, uh, 
you know, I think it's he's excited about it. I think uh, everybody's excited about our new uh, scheme and what we're doing. And, uh, you know, there's a lot there. There's a lot on their plate. And uh, there's a lot to learn. But at the same time, uh, I think it's quarterback friendly. And you look at with Devontae Parker coming on. I know he's dinged up a little bit now. And the little kid, Jakeem Grant, that came in. And, and you yep, look at yep, you talk like about him. Jarvis. Mm -hmm. uh, and you talk about Kenny Stills. Uh, and you're starting to look at the weapons that Ryan could have within this offense. And under Adam Gase with this offense, there are going to be a lot of different opportunities for guys, getting guys into positions where they can make plays. And, and that certainly has to bode well uh, for what we can expect out of Ryan this season. Well, you know, I mean, you know this. I mean, and a lot of people know it. I mean, it's really about matchups yep. in, in, in the NFL and, and getting your, your best people in good matchups and, and, and good formations and whatever it may be as far as what your scheme is that week as yep. far as game planning and, you know, with the talent we have and the coaches we have. I think that uh, it's going to give Ryan and that offense a chance to be very successful. Um, you know, you look, you just saw Jarvis Landry. I mean, he's an amazing player. Just uh, you know, a tough guy. He brings energy every day to the practice field, to the meetings, and, and obviously, you know what he does. You know, Sundays af at Sunday afternoons. His works. His work's got. It's got. That's got to rub off on guys out in that field. Well, there's no doubt when you see uh, one of your star players working hard each and every day, especially the example you know he sets for you know the young guys, the rookies yep. coming in, uh, seeing him work the way he does, you know, you know the the love of the game that he has, uh, wanting to be the best he could possibly be. That that rubs off on everybody. Uh, Kevin Hackson, uh, Hackinson uh, writes, how much time have you spent with Ryan Tannehill to help him prove his game? And I know you talk to Ryan, but. Do, do you do you wait for him to come to you? Do you do you go to him and say, hey, you, you might want to look at this, or do you sit down I, in the meeting room? I, you know, it's not. I mean, I, I do go in some of the meeting yeah. rooms, and I'm around. I'm, I'm not his coach, yeah, right? right? So, yeah. uh, uh, the, the the thing about it is, though, you know, we've watched film together and some other things, and and um, I'm more or less uh, I'm there if if you know if if he has a question yeah. or any other quarterbacks have questions to to be a part of it and help support. But uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not his coach, and and I like I said. I mean, you know, with this new offense, he's uh, he's going to have an opportunity to uh, be very successful. You like being back in that room and and, and watching. Yeah, it's tape? fun, man. It's yeah. fun being around the guys yeah. and watching tape and, and being around the team and you know having a little bit of vested interest in it. Uh, I've I've really enjoyed it. As you as you look at what you're doing uh, with this organization, uh, are you looking to expand on that a little more? Where where would you like to see yourself? five, ten years uh, from now as far as the organization's concerned? You know, I'm not sure, Bo. I mean, I haven't thought about it a lot. I, I know that uh, I'm a dolphin for life, you know, yeah. so, you know, I'm going to help in any way I can to make, you know, to help us be, you know, the best franchise, the best, best team to, to somehow, some way in the next few years to get in a position where we can win a championship. Um, I hope I can can contribute enough to help yep. in, in that way. Uh, but I haven't thought about more than just doing what I'm doing, yep. kind of being around and, uh, you know, helping in all areas. And uh, it's it's been fun, like I said. You know, you came out here in, in 83. What, what, are your, your, what, do you, <clears throat> what do you remember of your uh, about your first training camp? Uh, I remember it being uh, it's hard. I mean, it yeah. wasn't easy. You know, nowadays, I mean, I hate to say it, these players got it pretty good. I mean, yeah. they only practice one time a day. They got great facilities. Yep. They got all the – you know, all the things that they need to be as good as they possibly could be. Uh, you know, we were in two pads, you know, yep. two practices a day. Usually it was full pads. And and uh, and um, I remember it being really tough. The, the biggest thing I do remember is coming in, you know, which got me really excited is Coach Shula talking to me about, listen, I want you to, after the mini camp, I want you to go back, get in best shape of your life. I want you to come back and work as if, you know, you're going to compete to be the starter. And that just made me, you know, it gave me that confidence, yeah. you know, to go in the off season and work. And then when I got back, uh, one of the few things a lot of people don't know is Coach Shula actually made me call all my plays and yeah. practice in some of the exhibition games. Uh, so it, it kind of put me on the spot, you yeah. know, really to, to work harder and to uh, learn the playbook, uh, to take kind of pride in what I was doing each and every day. And I, I, I think that really helped with my – you know, development as a young player, as a pro. It's kind of a way of <clears throat> setting the bar uh, up for you to, to, to get up to up to speed as fast as possible. But also, I mean, you know, it's a guy that always thought about multiple things, getting you up to speed, but also knowing during a game situation that would help you if you needed to change something or wanted to, to find something different that you wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, the one thing uh, – 
the coach Shula, I mean, he was a tough guy. You know, he knew personnel. He knew the game inside and out. But he knew how to adjust and, yeah. and understand who his people were and what they did best. You know, I know there was a, a time there when he wasn't throwing the ball very much, yeah. when they were running it and playing great defense. And, you know, when Duper came in and Clayton and, uh, you know, with Nat Moore, Jimmy Cephalo, some of the older guys. and. And myself, and we started to throw around a lot more, and we were kind of changing how you know offenses were were run back in the early '80s, and uh, you know worked out pretty well. Hey, uh, <clears throat> come some questions coming in. One other other questions talking about um, Landry, uh, Devontae Parker, and that group, uh, as opposed to the group that you had with uh, with Mark Duper, Mark Clayton, Nat Moore, a big part of that group, Jimmy Cephalo, and all those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, do, you, do you see any similarities, at least between those first two guys and, and well, Duper nothing Clayton? against these guys. They got a long way to go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they are great players. The similarities are, is, uh, you know, someone like Jarvis reminds me of an OJ McDuffie yeah. type. Actually, yeah. OJ was just a tough receiver, hard hitting, blocking, doing whatever it takes, uh, quick inside, make the plays, great hands. You know, that's that's the the type of player that I see Jarvis as. Um, uh, Mark Duper, you know, you know, Devontae Parker is a bigger guy, yeah. so it's a it's it's a, a different body type yeah. from, uh, you know, a Duper or a Clayton. But uh, those guys were terrific route runners. They were uh, they took pride in what they did, and they were always tough. Jimmy Cephalo the same way, yeah. and Nat Moore, and Nat Moore was the guy that really, you know, taught Duper and Clayton, you know, the route running, how mm -hmm. to be a professional, and all that. And you know, if these guys could get you know to that point. The way those guys were, they'll be something special because they have all the talent in the world, and that's really what it's about: is working and becoming a pro and understanding what you got to do to be as good as you possibly can be. You're listening to the Audible here, Dan Marino, along with Kim Bocamper. If you want to get in and ask questions, all you can do is uh, just send them in on Facebook. We'll go ahead and get to them. Talking about this, we're out the other day and uh, I was talking to Nat Moore and kind of got talking a little bit. And Nat talks about uh, when Duke first came in and. You know, you'd, you'd, call, you'd call something in, in the huddle, they'd break it, and all of a sudden you're throwing deep to Duke, who was yeah. supposed to be running some kind of a short pattern. Yeah. And that couldn't figure it out. And, 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 and finally, Duke said, well, every time Danny looks at me and nods his head, I just I go deep, deep. No, no, matter what, no matter what. I guess that, no. that, was, your first, that was your first set of audibles that you that brought in. That was audibles. That was, that was my <laughs> signal. I just nod my head like this. So, you know, if you get a certain coverage and there was a bump and run, yeah. I would tell him, I said, or I'd give him a little signal on the side and, yeah. you know, shake my head. And next thing you know, he would uh, he's going deep and would hit a big play. And that was, that was, Nat was like, what, what's going on yeah. here? You know, so he figured it out eventually. And uh, I, I'll tell you, and I, I got nothing but great things to say about Nat Moore yeah. and what he's, you know, done as a not only a player but also with the organization and our alumni group. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's it's got to be the strongest alumni group in the league without a doubt. And uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to be around him and that you know and the things that we do yeah. together. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'd say that those are those are some different times. You look at the speed of Dupe and and Clayton, as athletic of a, of a receiver as you could get, and. Uh, Pretty amazing the things that they were able to do back then. I tell you, they, uh, you know, I was very lucky and fortunate to come in to be, you know, with a group of young receivers plus veteran receivers, like like you said, Jimmy Cephalo, you know, Nat Moore, and, uh, you know, tight end like Bruce Hardy and Dan Johnson yeah. those first few years there. Uh, and and uh, the fact that they were fast, athletic, tough, you know, smart, and uh, can get it done, I think that, you know, that combination, you know, for what, I think we played together for 11 years. Yeah. You know, we did a lot of damage in yep. the league. Yep. Yep. Hey, uh, Danny, when, when you first came to the league and you you you, you kind of lit things up right off the bat, was there any time that you surprised yourself? I mean, coming in and you think, yeah. man, I didn't think it was going to. I don't want to. I don't use it as easy because there's nothing easy about it. Right. But the accomplishments that you that you were able to to uh, to, to attain early in your career, were you surprised at, at how quickly you became that effective in this league? You know, Bo, I think it's it's funny when you come in as a rookie. You know, you're not sure how it's going to go. You yeah. know, and I had success, and we had success as a, you know my rookie year, um, because you're just out there trying to prove yourself. You know, you're trying to be the best player you possibly can be, uh, work as hard as you can work, and we did some great things. And you know, that next year when we broke all those records, it wasn't, you know, no one was ever really talking about that. Now, you know, with you know, the internet and all yeah. the coverage and all that. I mean, each and, and every too, week, you know, about, hey, the stats, kind of, he's, on, yeah. he's on pace to break this record and that record. You know, then we didn't do that. We were just out trying to win games. And, and as, as we were doing that and winning, I mean, we were building up these numbers. And I remember 
towards the end of the year, you know, Harvey Green, who was our marketing and PR guy, is like, you know, you got a chance to break all these records, and and uh, and you never really thought about it. Yeah. You know, you didn't think about it. You were just out there trying to do the best you can and win football games. Well, you're, you're and and we did, in that process, yeah, 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 in that process, you know, yeah. so, you know, I remember the last, the last game, you know, he came up to Clayton and said, you know, if you catch three touchdowns this game, you're going to break that NFL record. I don't think Clayton thought yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. it. You know, I don't think he really thought about it yeah. up until, you know, maybe the week before yeah. when Harvey Green told him that. Well, which and I then, think and then is, we went out and he caught three touchdowns. Which I think is a good thing because the, the, the records that you guys were able to accumulate – we're just a byproduct of going out and playing the and game playing the way you know how to play and, it, right? Yeah, yeah, playing and winning and, uh, you know, loving the game and enjoying it and uh, uh, playing for each other, you know, playing as, as, as a team, you know, trying to get to the Super Bowl, which we did. Unfortunately, we didn't win, but, you know, we, we did a lot of special things that year. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hey, when you're, when you're out there in the practice field, who are you looking at or during this training camp, who have you looked at out there and seen that is that have flashed in front of you and you say, well, that's 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 pretty good and I'm going to keep an eye on this guy? Uh, the, you know, the little kid, uh, the Grant, from Grant, yep. from, from uh, Texas Tech, uh, his quickness and speed and, you know, his ability uh, is, you know, it, it can be, it, hopefully it can be very special yep. because uh, – uh, he's fast. He's quick. Like I said, he's gonna. You know, they're gonna put him in position to, to return kicks. Yep. And if you watched his college film, you know, returning kicks, he was he was pretty darn special. Um, you know, but just he in makes general, those wild plays out there, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know, but just in general, when I'm out there, you know, I, I look at a lot of a lot at the quarterbacks, mm-hmm. look at the receivers, the offensive line, and just in general, just looking at the, you know, all the players uh, and and how they're coming along as far as uh, you know their ability and and uh, how they're gonna help our team. Brandon Dowdy, the quarterback out of uh, Western Kentucky, yep. he's been getting some uh, some reps out there, uh, and he's he's he's, uh, he's he's looking pretty good. He um uh yeah you know what he's a local kid yep. from da- uh, Davy here, um, you know he has the one thing about him he has you know nice anticipation mm-hmm. he's an accurate you know throw of the football uh, you. You know, so these first few days that he's out there, it doesn't seem like it's, you know, too big for him and he Mm -hmm. can't handle it. So he's uh, done a lot of good things the last few days uh, in practice. You listen to the Audible here. If you want to get your questions in uh, on Facebook, just go ahead and send them in and we'll go ahead and pass them along. And uh, Danny, you talked about a little bit, but you've seen a lot of training camps uh, around the NFL over the years, practice against other teams. Uh, and it's amazing how you know it's amazing how the league has changed. You talked about the practices, how, how they're not quite what the practices that we had, or uh, the guys that the ones that we had weren't as hard as the ones that were the guys that were before sure, us. It's kind of been a, a progression here. Um, but they've got all the off season OTAs, mini a camps, more, yes. a lot more off season stuff, so they can go out and, and practice this way. Um, do, do you like the, what you see out of the training camps and the way the league is kind of mandating? You know, yeah. I'd like to see a little more. A little more pads, a little more physical, especially for those guys on yeah. the O line and the D line, so they can get their chances out there. But that's just me. Well, I think you hit it. You know, you hit it on the head there when you said that it's changed over time. But you know, the one thing these guys do now—I mean, you know, it was a full-time job for us, but basically, you know, we had a mini camp, and then you kind of worked on your own. They had an off-season program, but you know, you—you you know, if you lived in town, you'd go. If you didn't, you didn't have to come back in town. You know, for off-season programs, so it was just basically a mini camp, and then you had to get you know, yourself in shape and uh, come. I'm oh, sorry about that. Sorry. On this this thing. You can answer if you I want. Know, I don't even you know. know I, I should some, shut some, it off. You might have some serious do. business there. You got to take no, care. No, I know. I should shut it off. Either that, or bring not, home a loaf of bread. Yeah, right, right. So where was I? Yeah, so it's. Uh, I, I think the fact that. Um, all the uh, off-season conditioning, the work they do, all the OTAs, all that is is so much different than it was. I think they're so they're more prepared. Yeah. I would say, and physically, you know, guys are bigger, faster, stronger. It's because of you know the things that they do, you know, in the off-season. I you know, I remember I would run and work out and do all those things, but it wasn't you know in that group setting yeah. where you could learn. You know, I mean, just the timing and all yeah. that stuff that they you know you do. You certainly in didn't spend as much time with your receivers. No. As they do here during the off season. Uh, yes, we didn't do that as much. Uh, I didn't actually, t- 
you know, I know these guys throw a lot in the off season. I, I try not to throw yeah. as much as, you know, some of these guys throw now because I figured I'd throw so much during the season. Throw a little bit, like after I would lift, I'd, you know, just tossing around a little bit. But uh, uh, they, they do a lot more that way. Uh, as far as, you know, over the whole year, the whole span of the year than, than we did back yeah. when we played. So, Danny, you, what, do you, what do you do during the off season when you when you got some time off? I know you, you like to get hey. away. You like to play golf. And, yeah. man, you know what? I, I see your daughter, yeah. Leah, out here working, and yeah. she's getting – I mean, these kids – you know, so when they were, the kids, they were babies uh, not so long ago. I know, and now I know her babies are growing up. I mean, amazing. Uh, she is uh, – she'll be a junior at the University of South yeah. Carolina. My other daughter, uh, Nikki, um, is uh, – going to be a sophomore at American University in D.C. So, you know, like this summer now, they're going, up. got a wedding come up. My son Joey's getting married. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, they've they've grown up pretty fast. And uh, what do I do? I mean, I try to see them as much as I possibly can. You know, spend time with your family, yeah. obviously. Enjoy playing golf, you know, with, with the guys that I play golf with and uh, do that as much as I can and just have some fun with some businesses I'm involved in, as you know. You know, I mentioned Anthony's yeah. Coal yeah. Fire Pizza. I mean, that's something I have take a lot of pride in because I was... You you know, at the start yeah, of that, 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 you guys are going great. It's pretty good. That too. Yeah, it's, I mean, I know you're in the restaurant business yeah. too. I mean, it's not easy. And, you know, and, and, what you guys got sixty restaurants now. It's uh, fifty four. Yeah, yeah fifty four. And you go to a lot and of the He's openings. a star. I mean, Anthony's yeah, a superstar. superstar. He knows no exactly. I mean, he knows the business inside and out. It's been successful. Been a lot of fun too. The thing I like about it is you see like some of the young kids that come in and start working in the restaurants yeah. and how they grow and they become yeah. assistant managers and then. You know, they end up getting their own store yeah, and yeah. working that way and maybe moving out of town or coming into town. And uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. You know, it really has created a lot of jobs for a lot of people, and uh, we've done well with it. Right, uh, Morgan Comback uh, has a question here. Uh, I hope I pronounce that properly. I'm pretty bad with names. So I, 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 butcher, I butcher people's names. Uh, anyway, he wants to know, have you, have you seen the stadium, uh, the new yeah. stadium? And I call it the new stadium, the, the, the new cover on the stadium. And, the new and, old and, and stadium. Do you like the direction away? It looks, you're not going to, you know, it, I mean, it's, it's almost unrecognizable, that stadium with that cover. It completely changes the look of the deal. You know, it's amazing. I mean, really, with, uh, uh, you know, Tom Garfinkel, our CEO, and the, the construction people have done it and worked on it for the time period they have. And, and to be able to, you know, get this done before yeah. the season starts uh it's amazing i mean it's um going to be state of the art uh the roof i think was genius to put the roof on yeah. but it's still open air uh the four big screens are, are beautiful uh, for the fan experience is going to be outstanding and and uh, and uh you know the stands are a little closer yeah. there's outstanding seating all the way around the state stadium as far as the you know the the eye line as far as seeing the games. Um, so yeah, that's why I say it's a, it's an old stadium, but uh, it's brand new. Yeah, and it's funny because there was, it seemed like there was a panic around South Florida uh, that this thing wasn't going to be ready and where they're going to play games and this and that. And not too long ago, someone came out with an erroneous report that the stadium wasn't going to be done till November. They wouldn't be able to play any games in it. And and just this week, uh, Stephen Ross walks in and says September first it'll be done. We got no backup plan, so it's got to be done. That's it. It's got to be done. There's, well, sometimes there's no other. Option option in yeah. life <laughs> that's, that's exactly <laughs> failure it. is not I've been an option a lot of times myself <laughs> where there's no other option in life yeah. but uh, you know it's pretty remarkable what uh, you know and i kept telling people i said well it doesn't look like it's gonna be done i said look stephen ross has built billions of dollars worth of buildings sure. he yeah. knows how to bring a building in uh un under the right time and in in in, in in you know with the the amount of money and he certainly has done that with this one and he has and uh you know just to you know, the support that he's giving, you know, the community as far as our fans and the team, you know, to, to, to do this and put his own money up to, yeah. to make something special here in South Florida. It's going to last a long time and be able to bring in a Super Bowl, which we're getting a Super Bowl, you know, what, four years from now, yeah. I think it is, and, and the national championship games. And they're going to have a whole, you know, concert series yeah. where they're half, half of the stadium is going to be. It's going to be great seating for yeah. concerts. So it's fun. I mean, for all of us as fans, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to going to games there yeah. and seeing the games there. There and, and other, you know, uh, you know, other sporting events that they're going to bring in. You ever get, uh, you ever get watching this sitting on the practice field, get Jones to get in there and, and sling a couple around every now and then? Yeah, when I watch film and I watch some film and I see it, you know, and I, <laughs> it never gets I away you know, you can, I can see it with my eye, but my yeah. body's not, <laughs> my body's not going there. But, but let me ask you this. If, if, you, if your knees and, and feet and ankles were better, would your arms still be? Hey, look, I, your, I think your, arm, your arm's still ready to go? My arm can still do it a little bit, though. <laughs> just a little bit here and there. I mean, I threw uh, I throw it around sometimes with, you know, my older sons. Yeah. Uh, we just have fun when we're on vacation or whatever. So uh, maybe I'll throw it around a little bit during camp. Hey, uh, your, uh, your old friend Brett Favre, uh, he goes into the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. this weekend, the Hall of Fame game this weekend. Um, 
And but what a remarkable career he had too. I mean, you, yeah, you, you yeah. Know. I mean, I'm 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 going up there yeah. uh, uh, Friday. Uh, uh, Eddie DeBarlo Jr.'s, uh, you know, getting in, and I've I've known him a long time, yeah. even when I was, you know, in college, you know, being in Youngstown and yeah. stuff, and uh, he was kind of like a pit supporter too, a yeah. little bit. Uh, uh, he's going in, and, and all the other guys. Uh, it's always a fun weekend, you know. You get to yep. see some of the old players, some guys I grew up watching, and uh, I, I I always get a kick out of seeing uh, the old Pittsburgh Steelers like Mel Blunt and yep. you know Joe Green, Jack Ham, and spend a little time with those guys, and then guys I played against. Uh, so yeah, he, Eddie's having a little party Friday, and then there's some other things we're doing, and then Saturday nights the uh, you know the induction, and, and it's it's just a it's a great time. I mean, it's uh, for the fans and the experience, and the Hall of Fame is actually doing a lot just to, to upgrade. You yeah. know, they're gonna they're putting in a convention center, a spa, you know, a hotel, the whole thing to make it really special. Uh, not that it isn't special now, but yeah. it's going to be even better. Well, I got to tell you my my one story before we before we go here. Uh, when when you when you got inducted to the Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. uh, I believe we were staying down in Akron or somewhere. Akron, yeah. I'm driving to the stadium. I'm driving to the, to the Hall of Fame on the day that they were uh, enshrining in the Hall of Fame. Riding down the, the road, and I look at a guy next to me. His car's got his window rolled down. You know, he's got the arm out the trucker. You know, the trucker thing. Right on his shoulder. Yeah. Big tattoo, Dan Marino's face, right? <laughs> that, said, that right there, that, my friend, that's a football fan right there. That is a fan. I've seen that a few And the best times thing, it was a young Dan Marino, so you know, forever young on that guy's shoulder. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's great, though. But that, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, that was a special time. And the, yep. the fans supported us incredibly. You know, yep. it's not only me, but, you know, the dogs. It was nice there. because there was there were, there were like, there were like 15,000 people there for you and two people there for Steve Young. I know. Steve realized that, too. He, he, he knew it. Steve knew it. Yeah. Danny, always Thanks, a pleasure bro. having Appreciate you, man. Thanks man. for this stepping in and, and spending the time with us. Hopefully we yep. get you on here yeah, a little anytime. bit later as the year goes on. Yep, anytime. All right. All right. That Thanks. is going to do it for today's issue, uh, issue of the Audible. We will be back Friday at uh, 4.30. Join us then. Until then, we'll see you.